Hello Planet Watchers, good afternoon from Rome. So today I have plenty of news. I have some excellent news and some not so good ones. So obviously I will start from the latter and then we'll move into the, the best part of it. Okay, so let's go. So the first piece of news regards aware element devices. Now this is what's happening. Uh, back in October 2021, Planet Watch and Aware signed an agreement according to which Aware has undertaken to supply her quality data streams from Aware Element devices connected to the Planet Watch network. Uh, issues have arisen concerning the execution of this agreement upon agreed terms. Unfortunately, despite several weeks of discussion with Aware, we were not able to reach an agreement ensuring a smooth and stable data flow between Aware Element Devices and PlanetWatch infrastructure under the current technical setup. So eventually, Aware notified PlanetWatch that they will no longer provide Aware Element data streams to us under our current agreement as of April 1st. Clearly, we are very disappointed that Aware is not willing to engage in further discussions as Aware Element is a good air quality monitor. So what we need to do now is to set up a contingency plan. So we have set up a contingency plan, keeping also into account feedback from the Planet Watcher developer community. The plan will enable Element devices currently connected to Planet Watch to continue streaming data to us and receive rewards. The plan would require your active cooperation as, in essence, you will be sending us directly the data streams from your sensor. The details of the plan and, and the details of implementation will be described in a blog post which will be published at the latest tomorrow morning. Also, in order to mitigate an inconvenience in the coming days, Planet Watch will issue a 5.4 planets per day top up to each connected aware element device for the next five days. And that's in addition to regular rewards to cover, let's say, this transition phase. Rest assured that we are working on a long term plan with regard to this situation. So we have a plan and we are going to solve it. OK. That was the first piece of news. Now, let me move into more, uh, into better new piece of news. I can disclose now that there are over 100 type one sensors, mostly in Italy, but also some in France, whose data are now going to be monetized. So these devices are funded by different types of contracts. Most of them are related to local government contracts. And to make a long story short, uh, the, the revenue streams for this, from these uh, sensors will enable us, according to the white paper terms, to add roughly $40,000 per year in planets to the type one recycled bin. So this is not huge yet, but to me it's, it's a very important milestone because uh, you could call it market validation of the fact that type 1 data are have a market value and there are buyers from them. So I'm quite happy and proud to give this news. Uh, in terms of when we add the planets to the recycle bin, we might do it monthly or quarterly. Maybe we can add the first installment later this month, later in April. Okay. So that was the first good news, but it's not over. We are finally, at last, launching the what we previously announced as the Stake of the Planet initiative. So what is this? This gives you the possibility to stake your Planet's token on the Algo Stake plan platform. You will be earning a new token called PW, PW Forest. And the trick is that as soon as you have accumulated 1,000 forest tokens, you will be entitled to swap these tokens with a tree, with an actual tree planted within Planet Watch's forest, uh, which, which is related to a partnership between Planet Watch and Freedom, which was discussed some time ago. So you just take your planets, you don't spend them, just take them. You earn forest. As soon as you have enough forest, you can redeem them. 
actually the redemption process will kick in in later this later in April and there will be obviously a blog post giving you more details about this initiative but again this is a very good in my opinion very strong use case for our token and something that matches very well what we are doing uh, by monitoring air quality so by monitoring air quality we are protecting everyone's health now by generating resources which enable us to plant trees we are mitigating climate change we are giving our small contribution to mitigate climate change so i'm quite proud and happy that we can launch this at last and you can see the, the card that we have prepared for uh for uh the initiative that will appear on Algo Stake, I believe. Now, next piece of news. Um, as you know, uh, there were some issues uh, in connection with um, with Type 4 licenses for people, for people who have a sensor but don't have a license yet. And now we are um, we are we're, we're, we're progressing on it. We are working on it. And uh, over the past week, we assessed. A large number of requests to issue a type of license. Uh, there was a deadline on March 18, 6 p.m. CT. Now, the thing is that unfortunately, only a small fraction of re requests of tickets complied with the requirements that we had set forth in the dedicated blog post. So, we are giving all those who apply the last chance to review the information provided and to update it. The procedure was shared as a ticket response last Friday. Please go and check, check it out if you haven't already. The new deadline to modify the docs and to complete the set of docs is today, 11.59 50, 50, yeah, the end of the day, 11:59 p.m. CET. So please make sure you submit the appropriate documentation. Uh, we'll be we are looking into this. We'll be processing all requests and we'll be processing Atmo2 Pro requests first while we implement our aware element plan. Okay. Now, one more nice piece of news. Here we go. New Type 2 device. I already mentioned that there are new devices coming up. Uh, in particular, probably two different Type 2 devices. Now it's time to give some more details about uh, the new Type 2, one of the new Type 2s. So it is uh, obviously an outdoor device measuring uh, particulate. The data streams will go directly to Planet Lodge from this device, which is, of course, very good. It uses Wi-Fi connectivity. It has a solar panel, so solar power with a backup power supply. So here is what it looks like on the right-hand side. You can see the solar panel. Uh, we'll probably make it prettier with colors and things, but that's essentially what it is. Uh, as for delivery times, this will be announced as soon as the new waiting list management system is ready. So when we are ready with the new management system, we'll, um, we'll be able to give more visibility about uh, dates and timescales for this device. But it's, it's soon, I mean, in, in April, we are disclosing the <laughs> new waiting list management system. So we are close to, to release details about this. Okay, so these were the announcements for today. It's quite uh, bulky, a lot of substance. Let me put it this way. Now I will answer as usual a few questions. So there are some questions which are fairly recurrent. So when, when will the Q1 batch be completed? And does that mean all other batches will be delayed by one, two months? So it's a recurrent and very legitimate question. So as I mentioned previously, uh, we did not manage quite to complete all Q1 2022 deliveries by today. Some people will still receive purchase emails in April, possibly May, but I believe in April, essentially. We're still trying to recover from delays related to the pandemic, the worldwide shortage of components. So these are issues that come from the supply side, uh, hit the manufacturers, so eventually they hit us as well, obviously. But what matters here is that in order to Keep you better informed about the status of your order as you know we are developing this new waiting list management system which will add transparency it will be released very soon together with a new explorer and essentially we are moving from from quarterly to monthly delivery estimates so it is more 
better information and better visibility on when your time is coming. Oh, somebody would be willing to prepare in full, I guess, the sensors to speed up the process. Now, we said that we'll be introducing a 30% down payment on the sensor price when, when your order is scheduled to be fulfilled uh, in the coming three months. And that's, again, it's related to the new waiting list management system. So, and this helps us to have better purchasing power to secure large sensor stocks, obviously, and eventually reduce waiting times. It might also, it should also discourage some people who just bought licenses to get a placeholder in the waiting list and play with that. So it is meant to reduce waiting times and speed up the process. Uh, at the moment, we don't envision additional down payments or full prepay. That would probably create unnecessary, um, unpleasant competition amongst the community. So I don't, I don't see a good reason to change again. Is outdoor data more valuable than indoor data? Mm, great question. Now, uh, as I mentioned sometimes, a few times probably, uh, when people talk about air quality, most people think of outdoor air quality first. On the other hand, health experts explain to us that indoor air quality is even more critical for human health than outdoors because we spend most of our lives indoors and because indoors with poor ventilation, pollutants can stagnate and get very high, uh, higher concentration than outdoors. So my answer to this is that I believe, and that's the reason why we set up a project this way, that both indoor and outdoor air quality data are going to be, are very valuable for public health protection. Uh, there is less spotlight at the moment on indoor air quality data, which to me is interesting for us, it's, it's an opportunity because we are trying to grow a very large data set of uh, indoor air quality data worldwide. And I think that would be valuable. Last time, I think we talked about the beginning of monetization for type three data, so indoor air quality data. Today, I gave you some news about outdoor air quality data monetization. So we believe that both types of data are valuable. That's the, that's the bottom line. And that's why we are engaging the way we are. When do you expect to close deals in cities with good census coverage like Berlin? Indeed, we have very good census coverage in Berlin and probably at least a dozen other large cities worldwide. Look, uh, we are working to achieve data sales. I, we hit, a, I think, a good milestone with the announcement that I gave you today. So we'll keep you posted. And, uh, you know, these kind of deals take a lot of time and they are fairly complex. So it's hard to say when, how much. So I'm not going to comment on this. I, I will just tell you, look at the milestones we hit, look at the progress and see what you think. We are very optimistic and we are very excited about the progress of Planet Watch. That's what I can say today. So I will stop here for today. As I said at the beginning, we do have challenges, unexpected challenges, I must say, broadly speaking. We are uh, handling them. So I believe we can uh, sort out all the issues and uh, we can keep the momentum of this project. We are hitting good milestones, so it's not easy, but that's the way it should be. And that's the way it is. And we are, again, we are very confident that we are making strong progress. Thank you for your attention and keep watching the planet.